Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about a bunch of products, a bunch of empty products, I should say. I mean, literally a bunch of products. Grab your coffee, grab your popcorn, grab your tea, grab whatever you wanna eat, drink, whatever. And I'm talking about a bucket full of empties. Like honestly, a bucket full. So, if you're wondering what is inside this nice big tub of red bucket, then go ahead and uh, stick around. Before I start this video, make sure you are subscribed to my channel, join the Quack Fam, hit that like button if you want to see more videos, and tap on that notification bell, of course, to be notified each and every time I upload my video. I upload Mondays and Thursdays, so just in case your notification bell is not working for whatever reason, then you know, Monday and Thursdays, you can count on my video being posted on the YouTube world. You guys, I'm gonna talk about these products in no particular order, just grab it as I go. So the first product I have here is the Oil Free Eye Makeup Remover by Neutrogena. And to me, the interesting thing about this product is it tells us that it's oil-free, but for me personally, I feel like it does feel a bit oily. Not that it bothers me or anything. I mean, I really don't mind, but it's just kind of interesting how it's oil-free, but it yet has like that oily feel to it. I mean, maybe it's just me, but in any case, I love this product. It works very well. I think it removes all my eye makeup and my waterproof lash you know, mascara and my, uh, my eyeliner, I'm like, my glitter, everything. Like, it removes all my eye makeup with this one product. So, definitely a buy again product. I'll be buying it again and it's very affordable. I mean, Neutrogena is a drugstore brand, so affordability is, uh, that's the definite. The next product I have in my hand is also by Neutrogena and it is their oil-free moisture sensitive skin moisturizer. And this, you guys, besides the fact that it is a pump packaging, which is one of my favorite ways to package a packaging. I mean, come on. It's probably one of the cleanest ways to um, extract a product out of the package is by pump. This is an amazing product. This is one of my, like, uh back to basics go-to moisturizer i feel like it does really well with my dry skin it is good for sensitive skin i mean right on the packaging it tells you sensitive skin and yeah it's affordable i love it there are plenty of other uh, facial moisturizer i love using and this is definitely one of them will i be buying it again right away if I see it and I feel like I need it, yeah, why not? Cause you know, it works for me. Speaking of moisturizers and my back to basics, another one of those back to basic moisturizers I have is the Clinique Moisture Surge Intense Skin Fortifying Hydrator. And yes, you guys, I have the full size and I have the minis and they are all empty. I mean, that's how amazing they are to me. If you've been watching my video for a very long time, you're gonna know that I've been using this again and again again and again i mean this is basically my holy grail never fails life is just amazing it's my life savior literally i mean my skin is very dry gets patchy and sometimes it just needs that extra boost of hydration that extra boost of like moisture and you know just something to really help my skin feel drenched and this has never failed me has always done right and if I go back to whatever makeup store beauty counter that I want to go to and I'm like trying to think to myself which moisturizer I should get that really helps with my dry skin this is a, this is this is it literally this is it you guys I found another Neutrogena oil makeup remover so I got two empties and that red basket or red bucket so, I mean, yeah, you can tell I definitely love this product. All right, so now let's talk about something a little bit different. Let's talk about hair. And right here, I have the Tresemme Volumizing No Visible Residue Dry Shampoo. And that is what it looks like. Just a little baby mini version. Very cute. Now, I will say this is one of my first love when it comes to dry shampoos. It does say no visible residue. I can't say I really agree with that. It does leave somewhat of a residue depending on how far away you're spraying the 
the product onto your hair but overall I mean it does leave some residue but that doesn't really bother me because normally after I put on dry shampoo I like to kind of toss on my hair and kind of massage it just a little bit so that it looks more natural if you will um, so the visible part if I see it in my hair, does it bother me? Not really, but if it wasn't there, would it be better? Yes, you get what I'm saying? So, will I pick up another one? Yeah, I would because it's affordable and I know it works. And to me, I think it smells good, but I mean, to some people, they don't like the smell of dry shampoo. I know my dog doesn't like it, so yeah. Anyway, so this is another buy for me. I will be getting it again. I love it. So yeah. The next product is kind of like an empty product, but not really. I mean, it depends how you look at it. So I have here an empty container for the beauty blender and that is what it looks like. All right. And I put this empty beauty blender container in here because if you think about it you have to basically replace your beauty sponges not just a beauty blender but any beauty sponge you use no matter how clean no matter how cleanly you're using it you still have to replace it eventually so i threw that in my red empties bucket and yeah so beauty blender let's talk about it Beauty Blender is definitely one of my favorite when it comes to makeup sponges i mean they were the og when it comes to makeup sponges right so and all these other companies are coming through creating and renovating their version of the best makeup sponge out there and so far personally i haven't really experienced a sponge that i can truly love compared to the beauty blender except except the morphe sponge except the morphe sponge i do love the real technique sponge as well i mean they are amazing works very well they are affordable works like a charm you can pick them up at ulta amazing real techniques yes they are a must and a must have however the morphe sponge it it is a little bit more uh, what do i say a little bit more stiffer not in a bad way just a little bit tiny bit more stiffer than the beauty blender but from my experience it it feels more durable i don't know it just feels more durable and it definitely is longer lasting i've noticed with my real technique sponge and my beauty blender they tend to kind of have like their lifespan is a lot shorter compared to the morphe sponge but that's just my experience i don't know tell me yours comment down below all right so will i be purchasing another beauty blender yeah i would be definitely you guys i feel like my lips are lacking that shine and juice I am going to quickly apply some of this Dose of Color lip gloss in the most. And that will definitely make my makeup look more snatched. All right, so the next product I have here in my hand is the Laneige Water Bank Moisture Cream for normal to dry skin. And here is what the packaging looks like. And of course, if I open it up, it is completely empty. All right, so is this one of my favorite products? Favorite, maybe. I mean, it did work for me and it worked really well and it like cleared up my dry patches, but I still feel like the Clinique is the one that I go back to all the time just because I had a longer relationship with it. But you know, it did work and will I try it again? Yes, I will. It is, it's like kind of like in the middle when it comes to price range, I feel like. There are moisturizers similar to this on the more lower spectrum of the price range. And then moisturizers that's similar to this that's on the more higher spectrum. So is it affordable? It really depends what you consider affordability is, to be quite honest. But I love it and it's a nice hefty packaging. Did I mention that already? I don't know. But it is hefty and it feels very luxe and I love about that. So yeah, Laneige amazing company and it's a Korean brand why wouldn't I love it the next item I have here is the Urban Decay all-nighter setting spray and this is their little baby mini version so adorable and of course I have like the full size on my vanity counter but that's not empty yet so obviously it's not in my red bucket all right so this all-nighter spray is it worth it I mean you guys it is I mean on the more expensive side but 
I feel like the Urban Decay All Nighter Spray is everyone's cult favorite. I've been using this even before their packaging design has changed. The formula inside is just the same. It works well. It keeps your makeup in place. It makes it last longer. It sets your face. It doesn't smudge your makeup. You look good once you walk out the door to the moment you walk back in the house. I mean, it's amazing. You pay for what you get and this is definitely one of those you pay for what you get. Will I be purchasing another one? As a matter of fact, I will be, once I'm done, finishing my full bottle, which I still have plenty left. So, this is amazing. I love it. And I feel like pretty much everyone loves it. Tell me if you don't. That would be very surprising. Another setting spray I have in my hand is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Vaporize Sator... Oh, wait. That's a different language. Wet n Wild Photo Focus All Day Wear. I guess that's what it's called. Vaporize Seder Day Fixation. Anyway, so, oh, <laughs> silly me. On the other side, it has English on it. It is called the All Day Wear Wet n Wild Photo Focus Setting Spray. I'm not really sure what language that is. Vaporize Seder Day Fixation. Is that Spanish? I'm not sure. But here is what it looks like, the product. It's a nice little cute, I guess it's like a little timer, right? A little timer you get it like a little kitchen timer kind of like suggesting that this is going to last all day all night when you spray it now affordability yes it plays a big role in the affordability world because it is affordable it's wet and wild you should know that number two do i love it yes i really do like it now Maybe it's just this particular packaging that I got, but I do remember when I first got it and I used it and I sprayed it onto my face. It wasn't like a nice fine mist that sprayed onto my face. It kind of felt like hard water, like someone was like spitting on my face. It, it didn't feel very glamorous, if you will. It just felt kind of like... Ugh. You know, like, it didn't feel nice. Not It didn't feel misty, right? So, does that mean the product didn't work? I mean, not really. It does work. But I just didn't like how the product was being extracted out of the bottle, I guess. Does that make sense, right? So, hopefully, when I do purchase the next bottle, which will I be buying another one? Yeah, if I see it, it works, so I will get another one. But hopefully, the next bottle won't be, like... A bad spray bottle where the spray part isn't working as well all right so that is that and there you go since we're on the train of setting sprays why not talk about another setting spray you guys the next one I have here is by the company essence and it's their Prima studio HD Hydra primer spray and you guys, I don't think this is the mini version. I could be wrong, but I believe this is the full size bottle. Tell me down below in the comments if I'm incorrect and there is a bigger bottle than this. I picked this up at Ulta and it was definitely an affordable, affordable, affordable setting spray. And I can't remember how much it was, but I do remember it was not that expensive. As a matter of fact, it was pretty cheap in my opinion. So does this work? Do I like it? Um, yeah, I guess it works. Do I feel like it sprayed nicely? Mm, not really, all right? So just like the Wet n Wild one, I noticed that with this one when I sprayed it, it kind of sprayed with like chunky water on me. Like somebody was once again like spitting on my face, which was definitely not a pleasant feeling. So did I like it? Um, I do like the product, but do I like what was how it was spraying on my face that is a definite no i did not like how the setting spray was applied to my face it could be the packaging maybe my one particular bottle was a defect i don't know you know i'm not the company i'm not the you know i didn't make it and i don't know right but what i have in my hand i'm talking about my own personal experience and from my own personal experience this is will i buy it again I mean, yeah, I might because it was just affordable and it wasn't that expensive. But then again, I didn't really like how it applied to my face. You get me? You guys, you guys are definitely going to laugh. But I have another setting spray to show you guys. And I guess that is a testament to me really loving setting sprays. I don't know. I mean, some people might think setting sprays are just a waste of money. Just like how some people feel like primers are a waste of money. But... I use setting sprays. The next setting spray I have is the e.l.f. Makeup Mist and Set. And that is the bottle right there. 
all right so now let's talk about this elf setting spray do i love it yes i do love it a lot and it works very well for me and as a matter of fact I don't think I had an issue with the setting spray part. As in, I don't think I had an issue when it came to the spray spraying on my face. It did feel like a nice fine mist. Although, maybe in the beginning it didn't feel like that. But I do remember as of recently when I've been using it, it felt nice and misty, which is very nice. Of course, you guys all know e.l.f. is probably one of the most affordable brands out there and definitely a very large brand so if you are looking for affordability and you're looking for a setting spray that works well hey elf it works and when i go to the store i will be picking up a couple more because i know it works for me and on top of that i'm kind of digging like the you know rectangular packaging i like it very chic so the next product I have in my hand or products I have in my hand is a bunch of mascaras and at first glance you guys can tell that immediately my favorite is the L'Oreal Hydrofuge Voluminous Carbon Black Mascara and I say this is my favorite because well I have three empties in my hand count it one two three three empties and they are affordable you can get it online off Amazon you can get it in the drugstore they work well and there are plenty of different type of bristles and brushes out there but I feel like one of my favorite bristles or brush that I love to use is those big chunky ones see this brush I'm hoping the camera's picking it up but this brush right here is one of my favorite because it's just those nice big chunky bristles and I feel like that really helps my lashes elongate, voluminize, uh, thicken, everything you want your lashes to look it makes you look like that honestly at least for me it does right so I love love this mascara when it comes to affordable and it works L'Oreal pick one up. So now let's talk about all the other mascaras I have in my hand. The first one here is this beautiful pink packaging by Maybelline Pumped Up Colossal Voluminous Mascara right here. Very adorable packaging. You guys know pink is definitely my vibe. And when you open it up, it has, again, my favorite type of bristle, that nice chunky one. Love it and it works very well. The next one I have here is the Marc Jacobs Mascara, right there. And of course, when I open it up, the shape of it is slightly different. It kind of like has a concave shape to it, but it's still a nice chunky bristle. And the other one I have here is the Fairy Drops Mascara, which is this beautiful golden pink packaging. And again, a different design, but still I feel like the bristles are somewhat chunky. This particular design is like a three ball design. Honestly, I can't remember the name of the bristle design, but it's basically three small little bristle balls connected together. And you guys, just a little side story. My first Fairy Drop mascara I picked up at the Sephora store and they don't carry it anymore. I mean, it's not a big deal because I can buy it online, which I do, but I mean, this was like definitely one of my first favorite mascaras that I feel like really worked for me. So yeah, I love this mascara. All right, this very last mascara I want to share with you guys is by Benefit Roller Lash. And this one is not a chunky mascara wand. As a matter of fact, the bristles are very short and quite stubby, if you will. For me, short little bristles like this works really well if you A, want to have separated lashes that looks very clean and precise, and B, if you want to do your lower lashes, which is what I do usually. So, if you want to have nice, clean, separated lashes, shorter bristles are the way to go. Or if you want to work on your lower lashes, shorter bristles, in my opinion, are the way to go. The next item I have here is not really empty, but I feel like I had to throw it in my empties red bucket because I guess it's like a warning. Don't buy this product. What is it? It is the super dry nail polish from the Dollar Tree. Now, 
I picked up two when I went there to the Dollar Tree. Why did I pick up two? I, I don't know why, but I just did. And I just wasted two bucks. Honestly, I could have gotten like what? I don't know, something else. Like two dollars worth of ice cream. I don't know, but I wasted two dollars and I'm never going to use this. So why in the world did I pick it up? Well, it says super dry nail polish, right? So that's why I got it. Does it dry your nail polish? Super dry? No, it doesn't. As a matter of fact, I feel like it ruins my nail polish. Not that I have any polish on right now, but when I do have them on and I tried it out, it doesn't super dry anything. As a matter of fact, it makes it that much longer for my nail polish to get drier, right? So, it's not super dry. It's a... Uh, makes it worse and i don't i don't love it i hate it as a matter of fact i mean sorry i don't know what company this is um it has no name to it uh yeah i don't know i don't like it maybe it's like a dollar tree brand i mean i love dollar tree but this is like what the heck is this i don't i don't know what is this uh, i don't know the next item i have in my hand is the aloe facial cleansing foam by holica holica and you guys this product has been through a lot I mean, as you guys can tell, it's been uh, been through a lot. So, if you're curious, what the heck happened to this beautiful packaging? Well, let me tell you. First of all, this product works well. I used it as more of like a facial cleanser, not a makeup remover. A facial cleanser, like a second cleanser, not a makeup remover. So, with that said, what the heck did I do to this packaging? Well, the packaging is cute. It's supposed to be like an aloe shape. You get that, right? But once I started getting down to the bottom of the product, I wasn't able to squeeze out all the product and use all of it. I mean, I can't remember where the top went, but I got rid of that, obviously. And the packaging is plastic. It's not like a squeeze tube. It's plastic. So when you're having like a little bit of product left that's still usable, you can't really squeeze it out because it's plastic and not squeeze tube. So that was kind of like a packaging error in my humble opinion. So what I did was uh, I destroyed it. I opened it up and I destroyed it. And I had to scoop out the remaining product because A, I'm not going to waste a perfectly good product because it, you know, works. And B, well, I'm not going to waste a perfectly good product because it works, right? So, did I love the product? Yes, I did. But again, will I be buying it? I don't know. I mean, I had to go through some obvious struggles to get the product out. And you guys, there's still some product residue in there, which just means I wasn't able to get all the product out, but, I mean, yeah. So, uh, love it, but I feel like Holika Holika, you can be doing a better job when it comes to packaging, at least in this one. Your other product I use, amazing, love it, you did a good job, but on this one, I don't know, it's just my opinion, so, uh, all right. The next item I have here is the rose face mask infused with real rose petals, hydrates and tones. So this is the little packaging that I have. I believe this is like the sample size I got from Sephora. So that is what it looks like. And of course it is completely empty, right? So do I love this product? Um, yeah, it works well. I mean, it has nice rose petals in it, which is obviously very good for your skin. And, um, well, one thing about it, you guys, when I opened it up, it had the rose petals. It kind of looked kind of weird to me, but that didn't stop me from using it. I think it worked very nicely. They say that rose water is actually really good for your skin. It's like an anti-inflammatory. So when it comes to like eczema or like, you know, I guess redness, it definitely helps with that. So do I love this product? Yes, it works very well. Will I go out and run again and get another one just like this one? I mean, I will be purchasing other rose related products. Does it have to be this exact one? No, it doesn't, but you know, I know it works and it works well. The next item I have in my hand is the J1 Hanna Cream Dramatic Anti-Wrinkle Effect Intense Capsule Cream. And this is a Korean K-Beauty brand. So on the front it has your lovely English word and on the back it has some Korean letterings, right? So if you notice, I said that it is a capsule cream. So when you open it up, I mean, I would show you, but is empty but when you open it up it has individual little capsules that you can pick up which comes with a little spoon by the way very hygienic I love it so you can pick up with the little spoon that it comes with the little tiny 
capsules and that one little capsule it is just the perfect amount for your face you don't have to like guess how much you need for your face or try to figure out that I put too much on my face or did I not put enough I don't know you know none of that guesswork toss that aside little capsules for your face each and every time perfect now does it work I mean I guess it does um do I have any wrinkles? I guess I do. I don't know. I mean, I'm always striving to, you know, prevent wrinkles as long as I can. But, you know, that's just me. Anyway, so, does it work? I don't know. You tell me. Look at my face and you tell me. And I'm not that young. So, there you go. Uh, will I be purchasing it again? Maybe. I don't want to say no because I don't hate it. But I'm not, like, dramatically in love with it. You know what I mean? But... I will say one thing about this product when I used it, it had like this, I don't want to say a makeup smell, but you know like that um, makeup-y, lotion-y, kind of like expensive smell if you will, and not in a good way, but you know that's like the normal makeup beauty smell. Can't really think of the word I'm looking for, but I hope you guys know and understand what I'm saying. But that is what it smelled like, and I wasn't really a big fan of it. So maybe because of that, I probably won't be getting it. But you know, it wasn't that big of a deal. The next item I have, you guys all know, I've talked about it over and over and over and over again. Posted a mini video on my IG, which by the way, I feel like you should follow me if you want. Links are down below, and I will be putting a, you know, little at guacamole on the screen if you want to just quickly type it onto your phone and follow me very easy so this is the this is the tony moly peach punch sherbet cleansing balm and of course it is completely empty not a speck in there so and on the bottom it has a couple of Korean words and literally just for fun you guys if I read what it said literally on the bottom it is in Korean letter <clears throat> it says Tony Moly Peachy Punchy Sherbert Cleansing Balm all right so there you go sounds like English but with a Korean accent so that is what it is do I love this product I do love it a lot the one thing I would say is because it is a balm it does get kind of messy I mean you have to kind of use your hand to scoop out the balm you can use a spoon to keep it clean but then you know it's like at times when you're scooping out what you think is the right amount to take your makeup off which it does work sometimes you got to go back in and scoop some more and maybe your hand has makeup on it and so now you're like kind of contaminating the makeup but does it really matter because you're the only one using it I hope I mean for me I don't share my makeup ever because that's just how I am but uh yeah so does it work yes it does I love it it works very well I love balm cleansers they work amazing especially this one and it smells like beautiful peaches who doesn't want to smell like beautiful peaches right so there you go this is amazing will I buy it again yes I will are there other products that works just as well yes there are but we're talking about the Tony Moly peach cleansing balm so the next product i have here is the kudali makeup removing cleansing oil with moisturizing grape and sweet almond oil and castor oil so here is what the packaging looks like a nice beautiful pump packaging and of course this product is a good product i do love it a lot it worked very well i will say um with this particular product you have to follow the instructions to the T. When it tells you to apply on dry skin, you gotta do that. Just follow the instructions, it'll work just well. And I did notice compared to other makeup removers I've used before, I kind of have to like massage it into my face just a little bit longer, give it a little bit more love, you know what I mean? So, I mean, it works just as well. And if you listened, I did mention that there are castor oil in this. And you know, everyone says that castor oil makes your hair grow, makes your lashes longer. And when I picked this up from Sephora, the lady that was helping me out told me that the castor oil is good for you, which by the way, I already knew, but she said it will help your lashes grow and your brows thicken, your lashes thicken, grow, all that good stuff because it had castor oil in it. Now, recently I came across an article and I just wanna read to you guys what this article said. In this article, according to a chemist by Perry 
Romanowski, hopefully I'm saying this person's name correctly, this chemist said castor oil will not grow hair, all right? He is a cosmetic chemist, all right? As a matter of fact, there is no evidence for it and no scientific theory supporting that it would work. So yes, it is a total myth. Hmm. However, he does say that castor oil is not damaging to the hair and can provide some conditioning that improves the flexibility of hair fiber. So when I read that article, it kind of gets you thinking because when you type in on Google castor oil, I promise you a whole flood of like hair regrowth videos and like, you know, um, testimonies are posted all over the internet. I mean, let me read a little bit more of the article. It says, castor oil, as some might already know, blah, 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 blah. Um, it says, if you Google it, you'll find articles about it. Da, 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 da. All right, so it says, unlike rosemary oil and vitamin B5, both of which have studies that back up their aid in hair growth, scientific evidence surrounding castor oil is lacking. Any testimonials about castor oil for hair growth are anecdotal coming mostly from Reddit and YouTube and blogs. So, scientific proof, no, but personal experience, I guess yes, and that, does that count, right? Kinda gets you kinda thinking. Anyway, so just a little side story, off track, going off tangent, I apologize. This is a beautiful brand, an amazing brand, will I buy it again? Um, yeah, I would. Am I desperate for it? No, because I know there's other products out there that works just as well, if not better, when it comes to removing my makeup. You guys, bear with me. I know this video is a really long video. If you've been with me up until this point, go ahead and comment down below some type of emoji. Let me think. Comment a pineapple emoji. Yes, because pineapple goes with pizza. All right, comment down below a pineapple and a pizza emoji together then I know you've been watching this video up until this point, which is something I'm very grateful for. You guys are amazing. Love you guys. All right, so next is another makeup removing product, which I've talked about in my other videos, but because it's an empties video, I had to bring it back in here. This is the Shiseido Perfect Cleansing Oil, and that is what the packaging looks like. I believe this was a trial size. I can't remember, but that's what I got. And this product works beautifully. I love it. Packaging, pump, I love it. Will I buy it again? Yes, of course. And this time, I'm probably going to get the more fuller size if I do go get it. However, um, this one's empty, so I can't use this one, right? Actually, now that I'm looking at it carefully, there's a little bit left in here, and I got to use that because Shiseido is one of my favorite brands that I love to use. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna use that, you guys. That is not going to waste. You guys, let's back away from all that makeup, cleansing, oil, balm, whatever, and talk about something else. Let's talk about e.l.f. again. e.l.f., the affordable makeup brand. This is the e.l.f. Hydrating Serum, and you guys, I say it over and over again, a pump packaging, I love it, and, as much as I love e.l.f. and their products, they put out amazing products. Sometimes, some products may not work for me, but it works for you, or vice versa. It works for me, but it doesn't work for you, right? Because we're all different people. Make sense? I hope so. Okay, so this e.l.f. Hydrating Serum, <sighs> well, it didn't really work for me, to be quite honest, all right? It did not work for me. I was hoping it did because number one, it has um, purified water and jojoba oil. So those are good stuff for your skin when it comes to dry skin, right? But for whatever reason, whatever reason, maybe it was like the time of day I was using it, time of month, the time of year, I don't know, right? But it didn't work for me. And I honestly, I felt like I wasted my money. I know it is an affordable brand, but still money is money and I felt like I wasted it, right? So will I go out and buy it again? Maybe because just because I used the product once and didn't like it, that doesn't mean I'm like, oh, never again going to use it. I tend to give products a second and third chances because maybe I found a way to use it um, the correct way, or maybe I found a way to use it better right this makes sense so that is the elf hydrating serum when i used it didn't like it will i buy it again possibly maybe because i love elf 
Now I have two eyeliner pencils right here. One is by the company NYX and the other one is by Stila. Now NYX, you guys, is affordable and Stila, affordable, mm, more like expensive, okay? So expensive and affordable. Do I love these two products? I don't want to say I love them because my personal way of putting on eyeliner is a nice sharp winged look. I like that clean cut look on my eye but if you like that smudgy smoky smoldery look which is nice you know if you're going for that look then this is for you. It works well in that kind of situation but will I buy it again? I mean maybe I don't know I don't I'm not against it but you know do I love it? I mean, I like it a lot, you know, but normally the two eyeliner that I go for like all the time without even hesitation is the Kat Von D Tattoo Eyeliner and the NYX Epic Ink Eyeliner. I mean, come on, you guys should know that by now, right? You guys, I have here another e.l.f. product. This is the e.l.f. Hydrating Face Primer and this is, in my opinion, definitely a nice primer that works and affordable of course elf you guys i gotta throw it in there affordable will i buy it again yes i will because it works for me and it does i feel like hydrate my face you know of course there are other primers out there that does a much better job but this does work and keeps my foundation in place it hydrates it has like that silicone -y feeling to it which some people don't like but i don't mind it so yeah we are coming down to the last few items this one is the clinique moisture surge extended thirst relief just a little a baby bottle if you will or baby packaging it's different from the other one so i had to like separate it from the other one so it's empty as you guys can see and yeah Clinique. You guys know I love it. So there. Another Clinique product I have is this little Clinique Take the Day Off Makeup Remover for Liz Lashes and Lips. A little sample size I got. I believe I got this from Ulta. So that's what it looks like. And this particular product, as much as I love Clinique, did it work for me when it came to removing my eye makeup? Uh, honestly, it didn't. At least for me it didn't, right? Maybe I needed to use it differently, I don't know. But in comparison to my Neutrogena eye makeup remover, that one works much better than this one. That's just my opinion and my personal own experience. So, will I buy it again? Probably not because I know the Neutrogena one is A, affordable, and B, works. So, yeah. But I do love Clinique, right? So maybe I will try it again. I don't know, you guys. All right, last two products. This one is the Acetone-Free Conditioning Nail Polish Remover by Julep. It's just a nail polish remover. The reason why I wanted to throw it in here is because most nail polish remover comes in those really big bottles where you gotta like tip the bottle over and soak your cotton pad or your cotton ball. Then you gotta worry about like, you know, spilling all the acetone everywhere. But this one is, well, number one, acetone free. And number two, if you pop open the lid, right, you can pump your cotton pad or cotton ball without making a mess. It's mess free and it's more precise and accurate. You can wet your spray. I was gonna say sponge. You can wet your cotton ball or cotton pad however much you like without having to tip the bottle over. It's basically the packaging that I'm in love with, right? That is just so smart. You guys, finally, I have this one right here. This is the Tide Pen to go, and I mean, it's been through a lot. You can't even see the um, words on it because I keep it in my pocket and my purse. Anyway, so this Tide Pen to Go, it is obviously one of my favorites because if you're out and about and you spill something on your shirt but you can't go home to change or you can't really run to the bathroom and the just splashing water won't help, use this and it is going to work well by removing that stain on the spot. Hence, Tide Pen to Go. I mean, any like um, laundry pen is that what it's called laundry pen right any laundry pen that works for you pick one up the one i use is tide pen will i use it again yes will i buy it again yes because it works and you can pick it up at like your local cvs or whatever so yeah 
you guys that is pretty much it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed watching this really long video if you stuck around for this long thank you so much for sticking around watching the entire video it means a lot to me and um yeah so number one if you haven't already click the subscribe button down below subscribe to my video join the quok fam of course if you love videos like this then click the like button and give this video a big thumbs up. That means so much to me. Leave a comment down below what your Instagram handle is. And if you follow me back, I'll follow you too, right? So yeah, comment down below your Instagram handle. And what else? Um, I think that's it, you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this really long video and you're still awake. Maybe your popcorn is cold now. Your coffee is cold now. I don't know. But anyway... I hope you guys have a good one. Bye!